Um, well, thank you very much, Michael, for um, your indulgence. And it's not a hundred, it's probably a tenth of that, but never mind. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be able to come in and spend a bit of time with you uh, after the conference and hopefully not talk for too long uh, because you've been listening to people talk at you all day. But I did want to take up uh, Felicity Wade's invitation because ever since leaving the parliament, I felt that the work that um, Lee was doing was of crucial and vital importance and I wanted to express my solidarity uh, and my support <laughs> to, you, uh, to those of you who labour long and hard in the field uh, for listening to you and to David Tierney and to all the many others that work in the branches uh, and are doing what's absolutely necessary for us at this point in time, not only by the way for the health and the success of the Labour Party but for the country as a whole. And so, uh, as I speak to you, I, I want to ask for indulgence because there will be some things that I'll be saying that to some of you are very familiar, yet it never ever uh, fails to amaze me when I have conversations with people about issues like climate change or biodiversity decline or the state of the Great Barrier Reef, that they scratch their heads and say to me, really? Oh, I, I didn't have any idea or is that what's really going on? I think that's changing. So forgive me for what we call statements that are being obvious. The second thing is that uh, one of the things that I want to impress upon you is that because of the uncertain times that we live in, being certain about things and being willing to fight for them, being committed to them and putting it in place is more important than ever before. Yeah. And that's something, that's something that I hope I can do. And the final thing to say is, um, Michael again was very kind, but I, I, I don't, uh, you know, I'm doing other things at the moment, so I don't get, often get a chance to be amongst my former fraternal colleagues and staff. But the truth of it is that the time that I spent uh, in the federal parliament, the time that I spent as the member for Kingsford Smith, uh, as environment minister, and then later on as education minister, I made us amongst the most important and rewarding times of my life. And I thank the Labor Party for giving me that opportunity, so you should know that. <laughs> so, some of this you will have heard, and Jeremy Ripton spoke to you, I think, this morning. But, but here's what we know. It's 2019, and the sun outside this hotel has turned red. Uh, there are bushfires surrounding this city and towns up and down the coast and cities to our north, and it won't be long before it's cities to our south. Perth will have a day of catastrophic fire danger on Tuesday or Wednesday, and a climate fuel bushfire emergency is well and truly upon us. But it's more than that. It's a symbol of the fact that we've long since forgotten how important building resilience and respecting the natural world is. And so we do have an existential crisis, which is a climate crisis, but it goes deeper than that. Because it's not going to be solved by a bit of technology. It's not going to be solved by the deployment of capital. It will only be solved by changes of hearts and minds and political will and commitment from all people in all places and certainly from this political party to get the job done. Now, it's not as though we don't have a contra position or character with which to partially define ourselves by. Uh, some of these remarks may end up being more broad, broadly um, broadcast, but what we've decided to call the Prime Minister today as he, like a Roman Emperor, fiddles as Australia burns, is we're going to call, we're going to call Mr Morrison Nero from the Shire. <laughs> Nero from the Shire, which I think is a fair summation of the person who cuddles coal in the parliament, who doesn't have the political will to protect the Great Barrier Reef, has no economic incentives in place whatsoever to accelerate the transition to renewable energy and away from fossil fuels, and who's just abolished for good measure the Environment Department in name. <laughs> Of those, there's one additional that I want to speak to you about, and that is, has no plan for the climate emergency that we face. 
So that's why lean is so important. A large grouping, non-factional, within the Labor Party, uh, a force for good, but more important than that, a force to help Labor renew its mission, deepen its policy ambition, and make sure that the environment, taking care of the environment, and significantly and resolutely addressing climate change is central and core business for any incoming Labor government. Yeah. 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 Let's be clear about it now. Let's be clear about it now. It's not only the scale of the challenge, and it's a big scale of challenge. It's not only the sense of urgency that we have, because the sense of urgency is real. It's the fact that we face a new reality. You might call it a new social reality, but we face a new reality. And I don't think that that fact has fully dawned on people yet. This, what we're seeing outside, is our new normal. It might wax and wane to some extent, but this is our new normal. And the science is so clear and is being vindicated, regrettably, day in and day out in every corner of the world, that unless we, within a decade and one year or so, have a commitment and are on the pathway to halve our greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, then the chances of holding climate increase in terms of global warming of 1.5 degrees, of ha which is habitable, if that, diminish over time. And that is why you're seeing young people strike. That is why you're seeing people in the streets. That's why there'll be a climate rally on Wednesday night in this city, because people are starting to realise that this is a genuine and bona fide emergency. And think about it in these terms. The social reality when the Labor Party was formed was that people were being exploited in the workplace. And the, and the mission of Labor was the right mission. Fair wages, reasonable conditions, rights at work, in the 80s, the social reality was that the economy was giving us a great deal of trouble and the country was facing the possibility of a significant recession. And the reality was reform and modernise the economy and make sure that the safety net was firmly put in place as only a Labor government could. Now, the reality in 2019 is that the climate crisis is not a discrete standalone issue. It is a super issue. And as such, it should define the mission and the mandate of the Labor Party from this time on. Yeah. 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 I know there are some professionals in the room, but here's the truth of it. In Canberra, and sometimes in politics, we're in this funny, uh, let's just call it the false analogy game, which says if you can put an issue up, and you can debate it because there are two different points of view. And it's really about ideology. It's about finding the compromise. It's about the clever politics that might be the argument of the day. The climate crisis is not an issue like that. It's not a matter of ideology. It's not a matter of nuance. It's the reality that we face and the urgency which we need to address it is the thing that should underpin all our efforts. The second thing we should think about is that politics isn't linear. It doesn't go, as we know, those students of politics, members of political parties, people that have grown up, you've, you've been out there with the unwinnable and the winnable elections. You've seen them both happen. Some of us in this room have seen them both happen, at least. Some of a certain generation. It is not linear and it is not predictable. And equally, we need to realise that at a time when the population's faith and confidence in institutions and political parties is waning, is indifferent, is uncertain. That is the very time that political parties need to stand up and say, we understand your reality. We understand what it is you are facing now, what the country is facing now, in this case, what the world is facing now, and we are going to do something about it. And as you do that, the confidence, the support, and the participation that will be needed uh, from citizens in this country and in other places will start to emerge. So, I argue that Labor's future is inextricably linked to its capacity to rise to the greatest challenge that this country, modern Australia at least, has faced, arguably 
since World War II, but probably equally to World War II. And I argue again with that analogy that in World War II we had a Labor Prime Minister who showed us what was needed to handle that great challenge. That one of Curtin's expressions, and I won't try and quote it verbatim, but it essentially says, we have to refresh, we have to rethink, we have to regroup, we have to recognise that there's a major transformation underway, and I, as the Prime Minister of the Labor Party, and the Labor Party, which has the interests of all Australians at hand, is in the best position to do that. Now, along the way, let us think about a few other truisms or things that can roll through this party but should be contested. The first is that the Green Movement or the Conservation Movement is not the Green Party. Yeah. You know that, and that's why I'm here to applaud your efforts and your participation. There are millions of Australians who are committed to the environment that vote for Labor. Let us not forget that. That is very important. Let us be clear that we need to face down sectional interests that only have that particular interest at hand and aren't getting on board in the way that they should. Whether it's some in business, whether it's some in the CFMEU, whether it's out of self-interest or whether it is sectional interest. And let us recognise additionally that if we have someone like a shadow minister for agriculture and resources, <laughs> John Fitzgibbon, who I knew in the Parliament, get on fine with on a day-to-day -day basis, but who is undermining the policies of the Labor Party. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, we, we had, we've had figures in the past who have tried to present a false dichotomy that the only way you can properly satisfy or guarantee the pact that Labor has with working people and working people in unions is not to permit any protection of the environment to take place. Let us reflect on that for one moment. Not only are those who oppose meaningful action on climate change on the basis of employment impact willing to consign those who are employed to being in a business that will go out of work, not only are they willing to consign themselves and their children to the prospect of living in a climate emergency where you can't even breathe on the streets of Sydney, and the people in the western suburbs for whom Labor's mandate is great are now ex experiencing those health impacts more than the people living in the eastern suburbs or the northern suburbs. Never mind the fact that all, every single iota of future employment growth comes from a path to low zero carbon emissions. It comes from energy efficiency. It comes from renewable technologies. It comes from electric cars. It comes from the sort of things that the leader, Anthony Albanese, spoke about in one of his recent headline speeches. That is the future. That is how you do employ people. And anyone who stands against it is not standing against it in the interests of their own members. Finally, finally. It's always characteristic for anybody in a political speech uh, to talk about the future and to talk about the successive generations. And in environment speeches, it's the same. When I was president of the ACF, you would talk about future generations. Well, I do want to try and address that question as I conclude this evening by making the observation that the young generations today that are growing up are going to be more radical on this issue than we are. They have far more to lose than we do, and they have every right to feel betrayed and angry yeah. at the situation that they find themselves in as they contemplate their future. And when you hear a politician or a journalist or someone in a pub or a taxi or at the dinner table flippantly talk about one and a half degrees here or there or so what or something will happen, you have to engage with them peacefully but with intent because the young people of this world, the young people of Australia, are not going to tolerate it. They will be out there demanding change and they will put their faith and support in a political party that puts their interests yeah. right at the very front. That is the most crucial and important thing we need to recognise. Yes, this week, environment came back up 
into the top list of issues of interest and concern to Australians. And I've been around long enough to see it come and go a little bit. But I can tell you now that the climate crisis won't be going away. It is, will become, if it isn't already, the number one issue of concern for Australians, but particularly young Australians, and the political party that decides that the mission of a just and decent society is still as relevant in 2019 as it was when the party was formed, that decides that having a fair go is something it's still willing to proudly talk about, that charts a path and says there will be some compromises and some sacrifices that we have to make, but we can see a future. And you know what? It's a golden future. It's Australia as an energy superpower. It's cities and towns that are livable and green. It is industries that employ many, many people and don't create damage to the atmosphere of our world. A Labor Party that talks in that way, that fights for those young people and has a plan to deal with this crucial issue is the one which will generate some support of Australian people. So, the mission remains. It's the mission of a fair go with a new reality, a climate in crisis and the necessity to act urgently. On that basis, may I again thank you for coming up tonight, for your participation in LEAN, and don't forget before you clap, your efforts, your efforts in this party are more important than ever before. Thanks very much.